everyone. We're very excited to present for Inquiry at Queen's this afternoon. Today, we will be talking to you about music theater on Zoom, integrating virtual performance in the lives of older adults and future educators and performers. We will be sharing our experience working on the accessible and inclusive music theater project as research assistants for Rai Shine Singh. Rashan Singh is a research creation program that is supported by the Accessible and Inclusive Music Theater Project. This is government funded and located here at Queens with the Dan School of Drama and Music. Our session consists of 45 minutes of programming and includes vocal development and varying ranges of physical movement. We meet on Monday mornings from September through to April and our program is open to people of any age or ability and participation is free. So we're the undergraduate research assistant team. I'm Lauren. I'm Emma. I'm Jessica. And I'm Frank. Throughout each session, we model active engagement to facilitate participation. We document the observations of the participants we observe and reflect on the sessions afterwards. We also have individual tasks that we are delegated to complete. This could include creating audio tracks and dancing videos for learning resources, or finding trivia questions and games to open up the sessions and encourage community amongst the participants and staff. Here is an example of what our sessions look like. After going through a physical and vocal warm up, we run through the movement and singing of two to three songs and then conclude our sessions. Zoom as the virtual platform of choice allows participants to mute, unmute themselves, turn off their cameras, control their level of volume and create conversation using the chat feature. Using Zoom, us UGRAs can observe the participants both discreetly and with ease. In the week after the session, we create practice resources for the participants to refer on their own time and upload them onto the RSS YouTube and website. Colleen and Julia begin by recording their vocals and accompaniment, and they send it off to us, Frank, Emma, and I. After I've received all of the vocal stems, which are like the individual vocal tracks from Frank and Emma, along with Create My Own, I mix everyone's vocals together and I send it off to Amy, our wonderful choreographer, and Lauren so that they can create the dance portion of the piece, both standing and seated. Here is an example of one of the songs that we performed, which is called This Is Me by Pasek and Paul from the musical The Greatest Showman. When the sharpest words would have cut me down, when the sand of life would have drowned them out, I am brave, I am bruised, I am who are meant to be. This is me, look out, cause here I come. We developed a collaborative scholarly narrative discussing our roles as participant researchers, our perspectives on virtual research, and with the senior demographic, as well as how these experiences will affect us in a professional setting. From these answers, we engaged in a lean coding process to find common themes or differences in our answers. Meeting virtually allowed us to have a larger outreach of participants, as those who are not local are able to join us from locations even outside of Canada. Those who would not have been able to travel to the meeting locations are now able to join us online. They're able to dictate how much they sing and dance without the judgment that other people may have which could occur if we met in person. Participants also would not be able to see us creating notes on their engagement, which results in the sessions feeling less like a research project and more so like a normal session. Many may also feel more at ease when joining from the comforts of their home, which could increase engagement. Our role as participant observers can also create some biases. Since we're also participating in the program, our experiences during the session can create biased reflections and observations. For example, if we're really enjoying the class and are feeling more positive following the session, we may project these feelings onto our participants by assuming that they enjoyed themselves maybe more than they actually did. While the virtual platform clearly has many benefits, there are also some obvious limitations. Depending on how the participants place their camera angle, it can be difficult to judge their movement. 
If they're seated, we often miss subtle foot tapping or smaller movements that could indicate their level of engagement. Since everyone is muted, we also can't tell who is truly singing and the volume at which they're doing so. So it gives us a bit of an incomplete overall picture of their engagement. Each of us have learned a great deal from our involvement with the project. And we have each discovered something unique in what we will take with us after the year is complete. For me, my main takeaway was about the necessity for freedom in the learning process. I was assigned to observe one participant who had a sporadic pattern in terms of their attendance and levels of engagement. Sometimes they danced when we danced, sometimes not. Sometimes they were dancing when we weren't, and sometimes not. All I could tell was that they engaged in their own way with the session and participated when they wanted, how they wanted, and as much as they wanted. This has shown me that freedom of participation is beneficial for a program in this format, especially due to the age range of our members and the fact that we are delivering the program in a virtual way. Before, when I used to think of things like diversity and inclusivity, I would think of BIPOC, LGBTQ, neurodiverse communities, and other minorities, but I would never really consider age. Of course, all of the things mentioned previously are equally as important, but now I know that age is something that I should pay more attention to. The older you get, the more experience and skills you're expected to have, which doesn't create space for seniors who want to try something new or who have always loved singing and dancing but just can't find a space where they are welcome and where the organization creates accommodations for their age group. This has made me realize that art can and should be created regardless of artists' age and that we should strive to create a space to welcome that. The arts have always played an important role in my life, but this program has really emphasized how much positivity it brings people. The participants have indicated on surveys that they continue to feel the positive emotion that this program brings well into their day and even into their week. Since starting this program, I really think that participating in the arts can serve as a protective factor against mental health problems. And I hope to continue incorporating the arts into my future endeavors. Going into this project, I had the preconception that research meant reading scholarly works and writing academic papers filled with jargon. However, I learned that there is merit to the work that we do, which feels a lot less intimidating. We simply participate and observe during the weekly sessions and enjoy ourselves while conducting our research. Another one of our primary research questions was, how does this experience inform our own professional practice? Personally, as a teacher candidate, I have learned that programming is most successful when you design your content for the specific generation or cohort with whom you're interacting. For instance, in the case of our program's song choices, participation appeared to be more engaged when we chose memorable songs from the lifetimes of the individuals present, rather than the current pop culture. This programming decision puts our work into perspective when working with older adults, and it informs my own professional practice by encouraging me to show a level of creativity and resourcefulness that will help me see through a more informed teaching lens. As an aspiring music theater performer, creator, and administrator, I want to make sure that I create opportunities for older adults and seniors because everyone deserves to make art. As a future teacher, this project has made me notice my preconceptions about what engagement looks like. Some participants engage with big movements, but this doesn't mean that the people sitting down doing smaller actions are not just as focused or joyful. In a classroom setting, engagement is going to look slightly different for all students, so it's important for me to remember the various manifestations of engagement. I never thought of myself as someone who's proficient at art and creating appealing posters, but I was entrusted with the task of creating the weekly graphics, which has increased my confidence as I improved over time. Some of the most memorable moments for me in Rise, Shine, Sing was the creative projects where participants would work together to create a song from scratch. I've certainly never been so involved in creating a research presentation and was hesitant to accept this task at the start. However, I'm so thankful that I decided to work on it with this group because it really was a fulfilling learning experience. Trusting my future students and providing the appropriate amount of support to let them thrive in discomfort is something that I think will elevate my students' experience in the classroom in the future. 
Overall, taking part in Rise Shine Sing has been an incredible experience for all of us. It has helped us respect and appreciate inclusivity, accessibility, and virtual performance in older adults so much more. We're looking forward to how we can apply our experience and takeaways as the upcoming generation of artists and educators and to promote accessibility through whichever path our lives take us. It's been such a pleasure to be here and share our experience working with Rai Shine Singh. Uh, thank you for listening and we're happy to answer any questions. So feel free to ask away.